Should this place is creepy. You guys, it'll be fun. Got some big plans. You expect me to cut my hand to bring some vigilante ghost back from his grave? Man, you crazy. Play the damn game. I saw them die. They were nothing but rag dolls to him. He was relentless. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Front Row Network here on NPR Illinois. I'm Jeremy Geckner, and today I've got a great, great episode for you because I am talking to the star, the producer, the freaking story creator of the new horror film Devil Row, Vincent M. Ward. Vincent, thank you so much for joining us on the Front Row Network today. Hey, man, I am so excited. This is actually probably my, my first interview on Zoom oh, talking yeah. about Devil Row. There we go. Well, now now pressure is on. No pressure for me, I guess. Uh, anyway, um, well, I want to get to the movie, uh, of course. But of course, anytime we have somebody on the show, I always want to kind of get a version of like their superhero origin story, as I call it. So, how does Vincent Ward go from born human being to actor, writer, producer of uh, of stage and or of a film and screen? Getting fired from General Motors. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the Midwest also. So, you know, back in the day, if you lived in Ohio, which I'm originally from, mid uh, General Motors was the job to have. Mm. My uncles, my dad worked there. And one day I got hurt on the job and they told me I couldn't come back. Oh. So then I went and um, started working at a place called Champ Sports, became the number one salesman in the district in Dayton, Ohio. Went from there, they moved me to Columbus and uh, doing a great job. And one day the general manager came and said, you're doing such a great job. How far you want to take it in the company? I said, I would like to have a position like yours one day. <laughs> Two weeks later, he fired me. Man. Hell no, come on. <laughs> no, seriously. Three weeks after that, I went and saw my very first play. I had never seen a play before. And I was, what, 28, 29? Wow. And it was at a very small theater called Living the Dream Theater, like 15 seats. And I fell in love with acting that day. Long story short, Champs tried to give me my job back. I told him no. When it was time for me to finally move to move here to LA, General Motors cut me a check for $10,000 telling me not to come back. So what we might think is a negative might be a positive to push you into what you really and truly should be doing. So I thank them. I thank Champs. I thank G GM for letting me go because like four years after that, everybody lost their job at GM. So I just got a little extra head start. And that's, and I've been acting ever since. And kickstarted into something that you really, really love and that, uh, hey, it's paying off because let's talk about this new film here, Devil Row. Um, you know, I'm a horror film fiend. I, I always have been. And I'm really into like, folklore and legends and stuff like that like in just like regular life you know like i watch like all those history channel shows that are about like oh this is where this legend comes from so this film really spoke to me because it's a, just like this a like, wholly original concept here and there's a line in it that i love where it said that one of the characters says that most ghost stories are based on something true um and yeah. so i i just really kind of want to know like not only as the star but also the creator of the story here where did this character this legend come from like what were the inspirations it for you i dreamed it no way <laughs> <laughs> i swear to you every project that i've created i've dreamed it i can see it with my you know while i'm sleeping i can hear the voices i can see what the character looks like, which is, you know, I, I, I'm so used to being in front of the camera and not behind it, mm. but something just clicked one day and I've been doing that ever since. And I've just been creating all these different projects and I can see them and I can hear the voices. And that's how Devereaux came. And, and also with Devereaux, I saw like some of the golf, golf people, you know, their attire, and I really liked it. And so I think that's what really triggered everything when I saw the outfits. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't realize how much that stuff cost. I'm like, man, these guys, 
Hey, hey, they spending some money on these clothes. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, and I love too that the the look of the character, you know, you've got obviously some of the Louisiana voodoo uh kind of type of influence there. Um, but you're right. It is also kind of just since its basis is more the Civil War time, you know, you also have kind of that more long flowy clothing and stuff like that. So like is what we see in the movie like verbatim what you kind of saw in your head when you dreamed up this character? 100 percent. 100 percent. I didn't see Tony Todd. Yeah. <laughs> which I'm, I'm, I'm glad I saw him when I opened my eyes. But I saw because I think for me. um. I always play all the characters. Yeah. So it's like me talking to me, you know, as you know, the, the two or three different characters. So yeah, man, I just talk to myself and sometimes my wife be like, you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just in the middle of something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same way, actually. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, just give me like 10 seconds. I'll be, I'll be right back. Yeah. Here with you. But, but I've always, Growing up, I was I was a basketball star, and I used to be a dancer in a rap group. So instead of having like Michael Jordan or Dominique Wilkins posters on my wall, or you know Public Enemy or somebody like that on my wall, I had Chucky. I had <laughs> I had a I had a full Freddy Krueger uh, a hard post that stood up. You know, I had that. I had the Jasons. I had the Michaels on my wall. And my parents used to, yeah, used to ask me, like, you know, is there something you want to talk to me about? I'm like, no. <laughs> so yeah. I've always loved the the genre of horror. And, you know, I just got tired of getting killed off with stuff. And I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to start killing some people. <laughs> I love that. Just like take <laughs> take the take the weapon for yourself there. I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna do this here. Well, I mean, you kind of mentioned there, like growing up, you were all about, uh, you know, you loved horror films and stuff. Have you been interested also your whole life in like folklore and like these kinds of folk tales that that create some of these legends that we see? Uh, definitely, kind of like this film here. Yeah, man, I, I I definitely have, but I just didn't know how to go about doing it, and then. He just popped in a dream one night. I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> I don't know why this this strange person is in my head, but let's see what he can do. And yeah. I mean, it took it took a while, man. It's it's been it's been like four or five years. So you know, and I'm still shocked that it's it's time. And I smile and I've cried. You know, when I saw the the trailer last week, I just I cried. I can't even lie to you. I don't know how many times that the trailer has been played. Maybe fifteen thousand. Five of it is me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. You gotta take pride and, in and your other word. ten is my mom. <laughs> oh well, sure, yeah, of course. Oh, there, there's more than ten there probably. <laughs> and my mom does that to me all the time too. Anything I put online. Um, well, and you know, I. I I also kind of love uh, the sense of this film that um, you really do take the time to kind of flesh out like what the power base of this character is, because, um, you know, for me, it, it conjured up thoughts of like the old Tibetan like Tulpa legends where, you know, the thought of the thing or the fear of the thing gives it more power. Um, was that kind of, was that like a very core part of what, of developing the story of the, of Devil Row? Well, um, Baron is his, is his first name. Baron was innocent. You know, he he was innocent. He was working for some people and it was the 4th of July. And sometimes, you know, when alcohol is involved, people can get in other people's heads. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. You know, he wasn't a it wasn't a bad person. Um, he just got caught up in a situation where some people let's let the evil come out of them. Mm -hmm. And you know, if, and for a parent, and like you said, your mother and my mother, you do something to their child, they're gonna do try to try their best to, you know, of course, in in Devereaux, bring the child back, <laughs> you know. So she brought him back, and um, unfortunately, some people had to get done in for, for for the mistakes they made. So I mean, this is about love, it's about death, it's about innocence, it's about redemption. So, you know, it's kind of like 
It's kind of like Emmett Till, how Emmett Till was. Emmett Till was, yeah. you know, he was he was innocent, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was some situation where racism kicked in, and um we all know what happened with that, and that's pretty much what happened with, with Devereaux. So I thought about Emmett Till as well, and how if his mother could have brought him back, mm. would she have? Because I know my mom, if she if something was to happen to me like that, she definitely would have tried, tried to bring me back if she had that power. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that you put that there because... You know, the in the way that story unfolds in this film, you know, it got me thinking a lot about, um, you know, the most recent version of Candyman, because, of course, you got to tell me time there. But the, the main point of that film is how these things that happened in the past that are horrific when we don't deal with them, they fester and they create wounds and they create, you know, in the sense of this story, a supernatural force. But in real life that turns into, you know, resentment and bad feelings and tension and stuff. So I love that you put that into the story. Was that very intentional? Oh, 100%. You know, I, it's, it's, I, I think about like um, people that's in a gang. Mm. But as they get older, they change their lives around. But the that the family that you hurt back in the day, they still haven't forget the pain you caused to them just because you're this person now. Mm. That that family still still has has revenge on their mind, and some of them, you know, will will work it out and try to get you back. You know, no matter how much you might be doing for for the community or what you might doing be doing for kids, but you took me, you killed my dad years ago, and I yeah. haven't forgot about it. Yeah, so. yeah, and you also give a, a a good amount of complexity to that particular part of Baron's story there too, because the inciting event, the person has to be talked into it. You know, like they're, they're reluctant, like they're very much in the sense of, you know, Michael's Jr., so to speak. Um, he's he's there just saying like, no, this isn't true. You know, this guy, he, he's a good person, you know, like we're friends and more part of the family. But you're right. Just those creeping influences, yeah. like get inside and, and force him to do something that even at the end of it, he's like, oh, God, why did I do that? But I think it's a great uh, sense of what you're doing there, which is kind of like the mob mentality, right? Like you just do things you wouldn't do. Um, based on just these outside influences and how easily that can corrupt some people, right? Indeed. And and that's exactly what happened. I mean, the, the guy he worked for, he wasn't a bad person. He mm. loved, he loved Baron. His wife loved Baron. But again, sometimes with the alcohol and drugs and all that stuff, you know, get to working and then uh, other people start getting in your head. Make you do things that you sh that you know that you shouldn't do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I absolutely love this film, like especially your performance in it. I love creating new legends. I love like you know new characters there. Um, what are you kind of hoping like goes forward with this character? Because obviously we can get more from the character, but like I see like tons of stuff. You can get those cardboard cutouts of Freddy Krueger yeah. and stuff like that. Um, do you have any further plans for this character? I I've always wanted to be like. Jason and Michael Myers and our true story one time it was they were auditioning for the one of those Texas Chainsaw Massacres and I wanted to audition for Leatherface <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like we, you never saw his skin or anything like that so at that time and then I remember my agent was like are you crazy you know you're you're black he's white I said I don't I don't care and that made me think too you know, come to think about it, it made me think like, oh, okay, I can't audition for them. Okay, so I could just audition for Candyman, and I can't do that because the legend himself, Tony Todd, will <laughs> always be Candyman. Mm -hmm. Even though the new one came out, I still couldn't see, I couldn't see anything but Candyman. Mm -hmm. I mean, see anything but Todd, Tony. So, no, I mean, I just always wanted to be in in that conversation of those those legendary, you know, horror icons. I remember I did a movie called Death House, and I saw all these people that that had been in horror films over the years. And the first thing I said, "What the heck am I doing here? <laughs> how am I how am I a part of this?" And you know, so yeah, I just want I just want to be associated with 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 them and um you know 
even like I was thinking about the universal, the Halloween universal uh, thing that we have here, here in L.A. And I wouldn't mind seeing Devereaux have his own universal uh, 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 attraction, you know, you posters. Uh, you know, uh, Jigsaw was up to part 10 now. He not, He's not even hardly in the, in the movies anymore. He died at like number three. Sorry, spoilers, right. guys. <laughs> Yeah, Michael Myers. I mean, you know, Halloween Dead or whatever. The Halloween ends. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never know. No. Never, never know. Well, um, Vincent, I, I really do love this character. I love the the lore that you've put around him, and I really hope we get more from it. And I just want to thank you for your time and the art that you put out into the world. It really does make a difference uh, to to me and to everyone that sees it. So thank you again for joining us today, and good luck with the film. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.